Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with two very special guests. Uh, they actually went outside, but for the time being, we're David and Nigel. Hi, guys. Hi. In, in the world's smallest oh. space. Yeah. Yes. We haven't even got three chairs in here. No, <laughs> Nigel's on the, the floor. Nigel knows his place. Uh, I'm okay. So, my top discussion I wanted to get with everyone today is I've had a lot of messages, and I've spoken to you about it quite as well, Dave, is the lack of work at the moment or phone calls that are coming in. Um, all over the UK that I've got from. I'm not commercial, I'm not domestic here. And getting your thoughts on the reasons why and what we could do to try and help out or what we could... We would do in our positions. So one of the main reasons, do you think, why work is dropping off or the phone calls are, are slowing down? What, what do you think? Well, it's the, uh, the old credit crunch, isn't it? People uh, having to tighten their belts. I mean, I know I can't afford my electric bill. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have to turn a few of these lights off and things. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I suppose uh, we, we had it quite good in a way from COVID because people were spending money on their houses instead of their holidays. Yeah. Uh, so there was a bit of a boom there, I think. We were one of the busiest anyway. we've ever been yeah, straight yeah. after COVID. But uh, obviously this year, uh, budgets are tighter, aren't they? People are struggling to make ends meet yeah, it's um, just I th- one of the. It's just it's, it's, it's so unpredictable the way the world is at the moment with the price. Literally, gas, electric are just through the roof. Um, yeah. All this sort of stuff going on in the government at the moment, where it's changing hands, and people just don't know which way to turn. I mean, a lot of people said we're on the cusp of a recession. Would you say so? Or I'm sounding like this because I don't want to feel rude. Stick. Oh, no. no, you're right. You're there all you right. Sorry. Sorry, night. I don't mind. <laughs> Has his uses. He does, good lad. Um, well, what do you think? Recession coming? Because you've lived through it. I've never worked in a recession. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? Who knows what the future holds? Certainly, I don't think there's any short-term answer to it all. I think it's going to drag on for a lot longer. And, of course, things are going to get worse yeah. uh, as prices go up in uh, oh, October. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, is that what it is? It's going to be a fun winter coming up. Uh, or not. But the thing is... Uh, no Sparky should be short of work mm. because uh, anybody, domestic or commercial, should be splashing out at this point on upgrading to more energy efficient means, especially with things like lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've got a, a uh, company around here, for example, who are a bit um, short sighted, you could say, because uh, they've got dying fluorescent lights in their place so their fluorescent lights are old they require a lot of maintenance a lot of them aren't working properly anymore and they look pretty awful and uh, we've provided uh, pricing for upgrading to led panels now uh, <clears throat> but they uh, they haven't snapped our hands off right even though we gave them a breakdown of what they would save in energy efficiency and how soon this job would pay for itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though we gave Which them that breakdown. above and beyond what a lot of like, people would do. Mm, well, we don't want to spend money on, on something like lights. Yeah. But you are spending money on lights because you're throwing away money on the running costs and the maintenance. And if we put them in, we, we support anything we put in for two years. That's two years where they don't have to worry about maintenance. If any of them fail, we come along and replace them, no charge. Yeah. On-site warranty, two years. It's a no-brainer. Uh, and within two years, because it's a company that's running five days a week um, with their office and reception lights on for all this time, you know, seven and a half hours a day or whatever, eight hours a day, uh, the payback period with energy prices the way they are would have been sort of, I can't remember what it was now, but it was in, inside of a couple of years or something. It was, yeah. It's just madness not to it. And that's the case everywhere, everywhere you look, shops, offices, houses, anybody who is throwing money on... It's wasting money in it, wasting yeah, money in our stuff. The sooner you get these conversion jobs booked in, they immediately start paying them for themselves. Now is the time to do it while energy prices are high and going higher. The worst time to do it is if the energy prices in the future collapse down again. People won't see the benefit. Yeah. Let me just... You've lost the benefit by then. <laughs> I need to just check that, Richard, because the screen turns off the front and then I turned the flashing LED off to say it's recording. <laughs> so I worry something silly when you've got... To, well, you know this with Monday Club where Sam hasn't recorded something and you end up doing it all again. Yes. Nobody wants to hear any of my nonsense coming out a second. Not twice. <laughs> no, it gets worse. But it is true. I mean, the people that I've been speaking to that have been out of work, I wouldn't say it's a reflection on you as a business. I mean, maybe, I'm just saying from the outside the point of view... I've noticed it, Dave's noticed it, the guys I spoke to have noticed it with the phone calls and emails are slowing down. 
people are just being careful with their money. Um, what advice would you give to anyone that's in that situation where they're thinking, I've only got a week's worth of work. I'm the, the, the money the money guy for the house. What would you say is the best way to look at and potentially get more work? Or is there any? Well, it's, I've dropped that on you, I know. Yeah, hard mm. to say, really. <laughs> Nigel, would you like to take that one forward? Um, no. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously, um, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's always difficult, isn't it? Uh, if you, uh, we, We're quite fortunate because we've been in the game for 10 years now and we've got a large and loyal customer base. Yeah. Uh, and although the pace of incoming jobs has slowed... We're still not short of work. Yeah, personally speaking, but it's, it's harder, of course, if you have then just started. You haven't managed to build up perhaps the reputation yet. You haven't managed to to build up the client base yet. Um, the the best way to get work, uh, I've always said, is uh, your local parish magazines because they they get pushed through the letterboxes yeah. of every house in the um, in the area. Um, and also to try and get in with other trades is a good one as well. So we yeah, have some our, kitchen fitters yeah, and builders. We have our partner builders, Sam Smith. Money on my mind. And we have Phil the Plumber, of course. I won't give him his full title here because you don't like swearing <laughs> on your video. Very do. But uh, yes, Phil the Plumber, they, they will call us in for any of their remedial stuff on, as well. on, the, on the jobs they're working on. We've seen Phil this week, haven't we, Nigel? Because he's just started yeah. a new bathroom in the area. Uh, so, you know, if you can get in with other trades as opposed to waiting for stuff to, to come to you. Land on your lap. It, it may be worth speaking with local builders, local plumbers, yeah. especially the sort of one-man band sort of affairs, because they themselves, if they don't already have someone that they can call on, would probably appreciate having... A fresh, fresh pair of hands. Pocket, yeah. We've had it recently when I was on the phone to you with the, uh, the chippy that's got two units down from me. He already has a spark, but the spark has either become unreliable or not answering his phone or doing the things that he should be doing. Um, and because he knew, saw me, and he actually saw us on YouTube, because when we met, I'm, he obviously saw me recording something and asked a question. And he was there like, oh, I, I'm looking for a fresh guy, I'm looking for someone to change things up a bit. And that instantly has given me two loft conversions, fuse boards, kitchens, everything out of nowhere. So it is worth ringing a few builders around saying, this is what I do. And if you have a bit of an online presence on Instagram or stuff with you got portfolio for work, push them in that direction, send them a link. So this is the sort of stuff we do. Out of it, you could gain thousands of pounds worth of work from one conversation. Um, and then again, what, what are your thoughts on leaflet dropping? Because I am going to be doing a video soon on it where I would be dropping off a thousand leaflets and seeing, and now I'm going to, I'm going to get a certain SIM number with that number only to see the rewards of paying, I don't know, a couple hundred quid for a leaflet drop in a weekend of what can actually come from it. Do you think it's a good idea? Complete waste of time. Do you think? I, I won't be doing that video. <laughs> no, uh, try it. It'd be interesting to see what results you get. I I have done back back in my early days, uh, when when I started the business, I was into trying all kinds of different marketing tactics. Uh, some some turned out to be scammy. Yeah. Uh, which uh, some turned out to be more effective. Than some turned out to be ineffective. Obviously, you know, you you, you have to try these things. Uh, leaflet drops. I did one. Um, I don't think I got anything out of it. Okay. How many how many leaflets were you thinking? I really can't remember how many I produce now. Oh, okay. Uh, pr perhaps just a couple of hundred or something. Six, probably why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I um, it was all very low tech, low key. I think I printed them out myself and guillotined sure. them off three three for a sheet of A4 or something, and because is again budgets were tight back in the early days, uh, and I just went round houses in the houses on the doorstep yeah, in yeah, the yeah. area. Yeah. Um, but I know that, uh, I, I mean, we get leaflets pushed through the door here. They just go straight into the well, I have exactly the same thing, straight you, in the bin. You have to hit someone who happens at that moment to really be needing that service. Yeah. Oh, I really need an electrician. Hello, what's this? Yeah. And it, it, the, the trouble is, most people, when they're seeking a, a trade, be an electrician or whatever else, the first port of call is going to be to try and get a rec recommendation yeah the, I, I would say two things google almost instantly three things still get the facebook people so you people recommendation for local electrician then it's your word of mouth or it's through friends of a friends that you could yeah. just say oh my sister's had electrician recently said so it was really good people are going to be more comfortable getting in somebody that somebody else they know recommends yeah. especially if they can see that see the work so even if they pick up that leaflet if you're not known to them um they're still going to 
if they need an electrician, they're still going to go, well, I don't know about this. Maybe I'll... Uh, they, they might call you, but they're more likely to, to say to their friends and family, do you know someone that Recommendations. Can use? Yeah. And that's one of the things that I've always said to people through and through since doing YouTube. If you're new to the game and you're trying to get a good customer base or get your name out there, is get yourself some decent cards printed, business cards. When you leave each job and you know you get on, you've get you got on really well with the customer, they're really happy with everything, just leave them five cards and just say, oh, can you pass these around to your friends? And nine times out of ten, they do. They keep them and they will pass them out. They could just yeah. end up straight in the bin straight away. But that many times where we've had, oh, my friend gave me your number of your card, and we've had little word, li box of cards, what I used to get off Vistaprint, I think it was like 40 quid, yeah. a box of a 1,000 or whatever. And that box, that, that one card could pay for the whole box straight away from one job. So it's worth picking up these little tips and tricks throughout the way to generate more work if you can. Yeah, a lot of work that comes in, you tend to find it's recommendations from a happy client. You yeah, know, absolutely. See Everyone likes a happy ending, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yes. Mine's just actually standing up, by the way. He's just really short. Yeah, <laughs> really short. Bless him. Uh. Don't give it away. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all I've got for it. I say don't take it to heart. Too many people out there thinking it's something you've done. It is happening all over the UK. I've noticed it. I'm happy with the workload and, and everything that's in. It's it's manageable and it'll pay the bills. We obviously I've got YouTube to lean on as well, which I'm in a fortunate yeah. position. Um, so I can't comment too much of how much it's affecting me. But don't take it too personally. Try and step out, do a few phone calls if you're worried a little bit, or reach out to people around you that have got more than enough work that could be if you're in the domestic sector at the moment and you know they're still working commercial, speak to your commercial friends see if you can get on there. But um don't take it too hard thinking it's you. It's happening to a lot of people. So yeah. it's not your business directly. It is countrywide. And we can only just see how this goes later on in the year when it could get worse, could get better. I would say as well that if you're doing stuff uh, for like partner firms, builders or whatever, um, we always try and prioritise them. Mm. We want them to know that when they need us, we We're can there. be there. We don't. We tend not to oversubscribe our week. Yeah. Uh, we tend to keep a lot of... It's difficult to, we're just Fluidity. working two days a week. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, we, we are quite lazy as well. <laughs> but uh, but we, we try to keep a, a bit of fluidity to the week so that we can respond reactively. So if our builder phones and says, I've just cut through a cable yeah. here or something, can you help out? We'll we'll try and make sure that they're sort of prioritised, that our day and our week isn't so filled end to end. that we've, we've That's got, my issue, got or, or has been, yeah. is, is you, you fill up every spare second of every day so when I've got a spider on me out. So when you turn around and um you get to a get to a point where you do get this call out, you're then stuffed, you're working late, you're working really late, or you're working a weekend, or if it's an instant call out, you're then losing the job. Sorry, Nigel, I put a spider on your head. There we go, it's gone now. Um yeah, you're working late, or you're losing the job, you're losing the money because you have to recommend another spark. And let's say they do a fantastic job. Then that's now their electrician for the rest of the time because yeah. they've they've done a good job. You then be forget you're forgot forgotten about. I know what I'm trying to say. Most of our partner trades are pretty good. It's not like they they demand that we're sort of there there and then. Um, like, oh, I have that. Yeah. yeah, but they're the type of people you don't want to be working for. No, no. Uh, yeah, we had a builder in the past who, you know, you get them like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, when can you do the down lights? Because I'm boarding the ceiling tomorrow. It's like, what, what notice is that? Yeah, yeah I needed it doing yesterday. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. I've had that recently with a few kitchen fitters I've worked with. They're our friends, um, they ended up getting other sparks because they would drop it on me instantly. I'm doing the kitchen tomorrow. Can you do this? Can you get first yeah. fix in? Thought, how long have you known about the job? I just to be oh, sitting here twiddling yeah, my thumbs. It's been booked in for seven weeks. Oh, has it? Yeah. And you decide to let me know the day before you need me. So, it, yeah, sometimes beggars can't be choosers. If the work's not there, then you've just got to put up with it most of the time. You get yourself a good builder, you'd be sorted for a long time. But yeah, that's all my advice. That's many, many years of advice pouring out of me. And uh, hopefully, things, I would say will, uh, things will pick up. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. I think we'll I see. see. I just think it's going to be a rough couple of patch leading up to Christmas because then again, it's another thing that people hold on to their money uh, because they've got a lot to pay for. So we shall see. Anyway, let's. Um, if you want to head over to Dave's channel and subscribe, Nigel's going to Nigel's going to create a channel soon. He said, um, and. Uh, no, no. Right, see you in the next one. Bye.